3. Ministry of the Father's Love The Son shares the justice and righteousness of the Trinity, but overshadows these divinity traits by the infinite personalization of the Father's love and mercy. The Son is the revelation of divine love to the universes. As God is love, so the Son is mercy. The Son cannot love more than the Father, but He can show mercy to creatures in one additional way, for He not only is a primal creator like the Father, but He is also the eternal Son of that same Father, thereby sharing in the sonship experience of all other sons of the Universal Father. The Eternal Son is the great mercy minister to all creation. Mercy is the essence of the Son's spiritual character. The mandates of the Eternal Son as they go forth over the spirit circuits of the second source and center are keyed in tones of mercy. To comprehend the love of the Eternal Son, you must first perceive its divine source, the Father, who is love and then behold the unfolding of this infinite affection in the far-flung ministry of the infinite spirit and his almost limitless host of ministering personalities. The ministry of the Eternal Son is devoted to the revelation of the God of love to the universe of universes. This Divine Son is not engaged in the ignoble task of trying to persuade his gracious Father to love his lowly creatures and to show mercy to the wrongdoers of time. How wrong to envisage the Eternal Son as appealing to the Universal Father to show mercy to His lowly creatures on the material worlds of space. Such concepts of God are crude and grotesque. Rather should you realize that all the merciful ministrations of the sons of God are a direct revelation of the Father's heart of universal love and infinite compassion. The Father's love is the real and eternal source of the Son's mercy. God is love, the Son is mercy. Mercy is applied love, the Father's love in action in the person of His eternal Son. The love of this universal Son is likewise universal. As love is comprehended on a sex planet, the love of God is more comparable to the love of a father, while the love of the eternal Son is more like the affection of a mother. Crude indeed are such illustrations, but I employ them in the hope of conveying to the human mind the thought that there is a difference, not in divine content, but in quality and technique of expression, between the love of the Father and the love of the Son.